Dr. Avijit Datta, PhD researcher, Medicine, University of Cambridge, UK, and Assistant Professor, Microbiology, Chittagong Veterinary and Animal Science University. Gold Medalist of Prime Minister Award, and one of the pioneer members of Voice to enlighten us with his welcoming speech. Sir, please come up on stage. A very warm welcome to you all, our distinguished guests coming from different background, from medical science, engineering, researchers of different fields, bankers, lawyers, all the distinguished leading professionals from different fields. We are very glad to have you all here in this evening. Thank you for taking time in your busy schedule to come here and to attend this seminar. So today we are going to attend a very wonderful uh, seminar, as you mentioned here, Science and Spirituality. It's going to be, I guess, the first event of this kind here in Chittagong, Bangladesh. And here we are going to address some important issues of our day-to-day -day life. So the program will focus on some issues that we have within our system, like the belief system that we have. We believe in existence of God, existence of soul. We believe in the theory of reincarnation and the law of karma. But is it a blind faith or is it a fact? Is there a logical explanation behind this philosophy? So we'll try to appreciate these things from a logical perspective. So, and most importantly, this, impo uh, this event is uh, blessed by our speaker, who is a spiritual scientist, His Grace Chaitanya Charandas, who is an engineer by profession and leading spiritualist, spreading the message of Bhagavad Gita and Vedic literatures across the world. I was very fortunate to attend three of his seminars at Cambridge University. He was speaking to students and faculties of different uh, disciplines at Cambridge. So thank you, sir, for taking time to attend this seminar. So these things are going to be very exciting. Hope you will enjoy the program. Thank you all for taking time. Thank you very much. Ray Krishna. Being spiritual has nothing to do with your beliefs. It's to do with what you feel. Thank you, Dr. Vijit for enlightening us. All right, without any further ado, let's get this event started. It's an immense honor to invite our key speaker to the stage. Chaitanya Charandas, a B.Tech in electronics and telecommunication, is a world-renowned traveling monk speaking at leading corporates like Google, Microsoft, and universities like Harvard, Cambridge. By mastering yoga for decades, he authored 25 books on how spirituality can equip one to achieve life's greatest potential. He travels from America to Australia, sharing his deep insights and inspiring millions. We are very much glad that we are having Prabhu for the first time in Bangladesh. Can we make sound, everyone? In our language, we say, Hari Hari Bol! Am I, aud am I audible to everyone? S thank you. Thank you so much for coming today. And let us begin with, uh, with taking three deep breaths. You can close your eyes and uh, try to Inhale deeply and then exhale deeply. One. One more. Let all the stress, distraction, tiredness go out as you exhale. And let the freshness and energy from the world around us that is all alive come in. One last time, a deep breath 
inwards and then a deep exhalation thereafter. Thank you. So today I will speak on three points. I'll be using this whiteboard as for writing some things and drawing some things. So I'll offer a, a sip of wisdom. When we drink something in a sip, then we gently take a little bit of it. So in the same theme, I'll offer three points for reflection which will also address some of our common questions that we may have. Broadly speaking, there are two kinds of people in the world. Some people are wise and some are otherwise. And it's not just that these two kinds of people are there in the world. Many times we ourselves oscillate between being wise and otherwise. Now, especially, say, if we have to give some advice to others. At that time, we are sometimes ourselves surprised at the pearls of wisdom that seem to come out of our mouths. And I say, maybe somebody should record this. Maybe I should write a book. And yet, if we are provoked by something, if somebody angers us, somebody agitates us, we at that time, we start speaking things. Hey, why did I speak that? Afterwards, if somebody would play a recording of what we spoke in anger, you would wonder, what, what is this? How could I have spoken something like this? So, science has explored many of the mysteries of the universe. And what it has found has transformed human society. At the same time, no mystery is as immediately relevant to us as our own inner world, as what goes on inside our inner world. What impels us to do the things that we do? These are questions that come to us when say, if not we ourselves, but when someone around us, maybe our children, maybe our colleagues, they behave in unexpected ways, in unhealthy ways. It raises the question, what's going on? So Martin Luther King, the American civil rights leader, put his finger on the problem when he said that we have guided missiles and misguided men. We have guided missiles. We have been able to control our outer world to an astonishing degree. And yet, there is something inside us, maybe not inside us as specifically we, but us collectively as humanity, which seems to impel us to act against our best interests. And it is this that we will be trying to explore today. I'll start with... Uh, Briefly, my spiritual journey. And then I'd like to ask you, what does spirituality mean to you? Before I go into the three points of SIP, SIP. So as was mentioned in the introduction, um, I studied engineering. And throughout my childhood and my youth, I had a lot of faith in the power of education. Education can open new doors for people. Education 
can enable us to achieve new things help usher in a better world and that's why while i was pursuing education i was also trying to share it with others when i finished my 10th i started a free tuition for students who were just going to give the 10th exam to give them some broad tips when i was in studying my engineering i joined a social welfare organization where i for was a part of that organization which pioneered the education for the underprivileged in the slum areas and while i was going there i noticed that the kids were okay they were interested in studying but their homes were dysfunctional there was there was alcohol abuse there was domestic violence and then i started thinking how much is the education of say history or maths or geography going to help them when they are living such in troubled homes so then we decided to diversify into de addiction especially helping people recover from alcoholism and to a small degree we were fairly successful we called some campaigners to talk we asked and learned some principles and then Uh, the small section of the slums where we were trying to share everybody in that locality resolved to give up alcohol uh, an american thinker oscar wilde he has stated that giving up smoking is the easiest thing in the world i have done it over 100 times <laughs> so we give it up but it doesn't give us up so this is what unfortunately became the harsh reality that i experienced that uh, i went to my home for vacations and when i came back i found that many of them had relapsed and why had they relapsed because a local politician who was seeking candidature for the municipal elections had brought a truck load of liquor to woo the candidates and had offered it free and not only the pa parents not only the, the fathers but not only the parents but even the kids had started drinking so that's when i started thinking that if we consider the journey of life through education we are opening fresh doors so we open doors through education but it seems there are some kind of trap doors which open and people fall into those trap doors so these trap doors are inside us and these trap doors don't have to be just substance abuse they can just be as i discuss a short temper they can be being too moody they can be just being too harsh or impolite or demanding or rude basically we do things which we know we shouldn't be doing and then they hurt us so i have observed this not just in the slum areas where people were less educated but i observed it among the students in my college also i was among the i was studying in other better colleges in india and yet i found that the same tendency was there so that is when i started reading more and more about the inner world i explored psychology philosophy and eventually i came to spirituality and that's where i came across the bhagavad gita and the bhagavad gita i came across a world view that help make sense of uh, the inner world of human behavior as i was encountering it in me and as i was encountering it in others and in fact this was not just a model but i found that this was strikingly similar to what i had observed in science the scientific method had some at something which was so universal and intuitively appealing 
we postulated a theory and we then evaluated through experiments so i found spirituality was remarkably similar and that's what inspired me so much eventually that i decided that this is what i would like to study and share so i will talk about what i learned from the bhagavad gita about spirituality and about life in general but before i go ahead i'd like to ask you would any of you like to share what spirituality means to you our topic today is science and spirituality so what does spirituality mean to you do we have a mic by any chance the colleagues would anyone like to share thank you uh, to me actually spirituality i think uh, to uh, think about uh, the creation of the earth or universe and uh, believe that uh, someone uh, behind the creation and uh, i think uh, to me spirituality means going to uh, temple uh, to uh, uh, think uh, to serve the people to be honest to be good uh, to do good work uh, okay thank you so thank much thank you so, that's quite nice. thank you so much so two main things you mentioned like there is a underlying reality some kind of divinity hmm, the existence and then then that understanding of the underlying unity inspires us to some kind of virtuous living which where we are service oriented where we want to do good to our fellow living beings thank you anything else any other thoughts about what spirituality is i think spirituality is the way to be situated in our constitutional position okay that's a good way of putting it thank you thank you so much it is a way we can say to be who we are who we really are what our actual identity is who we essentially are how we can become or realize who we are that is spirituality thank you anyone else yes please we have a mic here thank you so much hari krishna it's uh, for me it's like a beyond materialistic world where i can have a peace of my mind uh, that what spirituality mean to me oh thank you that's well put that beyond materialism toward peace, peace of, of mind. mind we may have a lot of materialistic things but it doesn't take us much time to realize that a lot of possessions does not necessarily mean a lot of peace in fact sometimes the more externals we pursue the more it seems that peace becomes illusive it's so what is it that we can pursue something beyond matter so that is spiritual in some ways the material things in the world are constantly changing so is there something beyond this changing something which is unchanging and if you can hold on to the unchanging then we can be peaceful yes thank you anyone else hari krishna uh, spirituality <coughs> help us to uh, the real meaning of a life and find out the forces inside us find find out the force find force out forces inside us okay inside us so it is we find at one level meaning in life and then we also find that you know there are there are some greater greater strength greater force inside us there's a lot within us that is untapped undiscovered and spirituality helps us discover that yes thank you anyone last answer anyone
Hare Krishna. I think a spirituality means to get the correct answer about who am I, why I am suffering here, and how can I stop this suffering? If there is any God, where He lives, what is our relation with God, and how can I establish my connection with God? Okay. Uh, constellation of this syndrome, of uh, these questions, actually means author to Brahma Jigasha, and this uh, starting, I think, this is the actual spirituality. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So, there are life's fundamental questions. Who am I really? Why, why do I exist? Why does happiness seem to elude me? So questions like these, spirituality is what often people search for to get answers to these. Thank you. So these are all very valid and valuable points. I'll try to integrate them as we move forward in our discussion today. So, broadly speaking, spirituality is similar to science. And there are of course some significant differences also. But science is the study of matter. And spirituality is the study of what matters. The study of matter and the study of what matters. The study of what is really important in life. Of what will count actually. Now matter can also count. But is there something more that matters? Like you mentioned that sometimes we may have possessions, but they may not provide us peace then what really matters in life? If we have a lot but we, have never, we lack peace of mind, then maybe possessions don't, they matter, but they don't matter that much. So it is the study of what matters. When the Bhagavad Gita was spoken, Arjuna was facing a crisis of what really matters in life. And it was the answer to this question of what matters that was given in the Bhagavad Gita. So, the study of what matters, like I said, science has these two aspects, theory, where some aspects of reality we try to explain by postulating some hypothesis. And then we do some experiments to try to test whether that particular hypothesis is true or not. Similarly, spirituality also has two aspects to it. One is philosophy, which is similar to the theory aspect. And then we have practice. Now within the practice, religion is what also comes in. So, Actually speaking, the practice aspect of spirituality is similar to the experiment aspect of science. So, spirituality is the study of what matters. This means first there is a philosophy, there is a way of looking at the world that is provided within spirituality. And that helps us look at the various aspects of reality and it tells us what, what really matters. And then the practice aspect of spirituality helps us do certain activities, certain practices by which we can re evaluate for ourselves. Does this really matter? Does this really make a positive difference in my life? So the, so the study of what matters. Now, through science, we have explored our outer world. And through science itself, we have one thing that humanity has found is that the world is far more complex 
than what it seems to our naked eyes. That when we look at the sky, we might just see an endless expanse of white during the daytime or endless expanse of black at the night. But we understand that the space is filled with astonishing wonders. If we look at the, uni at the universe at its micro level, we find that even the atoms have a whole universe within them in terms of the subatomic particles. Even the cells within the human body are so complex. So, there is much, much more to reality than what meets the eye. So, spirituality tells us the same principle that what matters is much more important than what we see. In fact, if we consider what science what scientific progress means. Now, when I had gone to Cambridge, as I mentioned in the introduction, that we passed by the same tree where Newton is said to have got his defining insight. The apple fell. Some people say it fell in front of him, some people say it fell on him. Now, when the apple fell on him, Imagine if instead of Newton, a monkey had been sitting there. Now what might the monkey have done? Most likely, just taken the apple and eaten it. But Newton asked the question, hey, what made this apple fall? And that question led to the development of science. So now he came up with the theory of gravity. But if you see, essentially what is happening is, there is a visible phenomena. The visible phenomena was that an apple fell. But from that, he came to the postulation of an invisible principle. So sometimes people say seeing is believing. Well, if you really believe that seeing is believing, then stop using your cell phone. Because the whole cell phone operates based on the concept of the internet. The electromagnetic communication. And it's the electromagnetic waves are invisible. The internet is invisible. So scientific advancement essentially happens by looking beyond the visible to the invisible. So we move from visible principles to invisible principles. And that is what I'm going to talk about the second part over here. I said I'll take three points in terms of the acronym SIP, a sip of wisdom. So spirituality is the study of what matters. And then I is intelligence. So intelligence means that there is there are things that glitter, things that are visible. And beyond them, there are things that matter. So intelligence is the capacity to see beyond what glitters to what matters. Just like in youth, when somebody wants to form a relationship, people often go by externals. You know, how attractive somebody looks or how wealthy somebody looks. And that's an important feature to look at. But if you want to be in a long-term relationship, the looks are important, but the character of the person is much more important. If a person is constantly complaining, if a person is manipulative, if a person is untrustworthy, then however good they may look, they cannot very well be a person with whom we can have a satisfying or sustainable relationship. So basically, if we look at reality, there are there is the appearance, how things look, that is what often glitters, and beyond that, there is the substance. And intelligence is the capacity to see beyond appearance to substance, to see beyond what glitters to what matters. Science progresses in the same way. 
every scientific theory in fact is a movement from the visible phenomena to a invisible principle and that same point is applied in spirituality with respect to the point of philosophy the word philosophy itself means philly and so forth philly is love so forth is truth allow for truth what is the actual nature of reality and the bhagavad gita explains that the same point that there are two layers to reality there is a material reality and underlying that there is a spiritual reality na sato vidyate bhavo na bhavo vidyate satha that is is the material it is constantly changing this is a greek philosopher sophocles who said that we never step into the same river twice because the river is made of flowing water and it constantly keeps changing so of the material there is constant change our body is constantly changing cells are being born and cells are dying so the material is constantly changing but beyond the material there is something that is unchanging and that is the spiritual that is within the body there is a soul which does not change and this invisible which is unchanging can be perceived but it requires intelligence to perceive it just as nobody can see gravity but from the effects of objects falling the principle of gravity is a reasonable inference so similarly the idea of an unchanging spiritual is an inference from the material observations so basically when we try to some of you mentioned that when we practice spirituality we want to find some meaning in our life we want to find what is enduring so life is about dualities kabhi khushi kabhi gham so there is always duality happiness and distress now one of the things that we find happening in today's world is that a lot of people overreact so when there is happiness we go high up when there is distress we go way down and in this way we end up being quite temperamental quite moody we may see this especially among teenagers but it is something which is there in everyone say for example two people they somebody gets a new job and one day they say i love this job this is the best job in the world and next day maybe their boss gives them some feedback and they say what a terrible job why did i take this job i hate this job so we have this duality is going on or two people come together and they say i love you i can't live without you and next day something some quarrel happens a um, misunderstanding happens you know i hate you i can't live with you and in this way we just just buffeted up and down up and down so the world is like an ocean a bhavasagar it's an ocean in the ocean there will be ups and downs but if we are in this ocean if we are here as the waves will come they will toss us up and down however if we can find an anchor that is large enough and we can hold on to that anchor then that anchor will ensure that we don't get tossed up and down that we stay steady and spirituality offers us that anchor so the the essence of spirituality as described in the bhagavad gita 
is that there is a large reality and we are all parts of that reality so each one of us is a part mamai va misho jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sanatana that god is not just some being who exists somewhere far away up there in the sky god is actually all pervading of course he exists far away but he's within us he's without us he's everywhere and we are parts of that higher reality and to the extent the part is in harmony with the whole to that extent the part will be having meaning to its life the part will be joyful the part will be having an enriched existence so there is a ultimate reality and that is the divine and we are parts in fact we are all parts of something bigger we are parts of a family we are parts of a community we are parts of a country so all these holes as we take them bigger and bigger and bigger there is there a ultimate hole that contains all the other holes that ultimate hole is said to be god that is the ultimate reality and while there are ways in which the, the existence of god can be perceived through science in fact as science is advancing we are finding that there is so much order and intricacy in the organization of things that it just very strongly points to the existence of some organizing principle now imagine if somebody were playing a game of dice and what was stake in that game of dice was the person's life if it falls six you live if it falls anything else you die and once they may toss it it falls six wow we are lucky second time they played again it falls six hey you are living a charmed existence five times you toss it each time it falls six we wonder hey does the dice have only have six on all sides what is going on if 50 times you toss the dice and each time it falls six that suggests that there is something special going on so if we look at the universe around us uh, there are so many dice tosses any of it went slightly wrong slightly different we would not exist if we look at the way the earth is positioned if the earth were a little closer to the sun it would be too hot for us to exist if the earth were a little further away it would be too cold for us to exist if we consider the earth moves on its axis now if the earth were moving a little faster if a day instead of 24 hours was 16 hours then the rotation of the earth would be so fast that it would set off set off storms and tornadoes and again life would not be possible if the earth's axis had not been tilted slightly then there would not have been the alteration of seasons and without the alteration of seasons there would not be growth of vegetation so the life as we know it would not exist if the percentage of oxygen in the atmosphere had been a little more or a little less things would have been far more complicated that is one of the fears associated with climate change oh, it is like this scientists have found out almost 127 principles each of these things have to be exactly what they are if even a slight variation in any of these life would not have been possible so it's so many dice have been thrown and each of them have fallen in such a way that the broader hole that we belong to that broader hole is just suited for our existence so it is with as i said intelligence means to see beyond what glitters to what matters so if we look at the universe properly we will see that there is some organizing principle and that organizing principle how do we align with it that's the last part i'll talk 
What was the acronym I was going to discuss? Do you remember? Yes, a sip of wisdom. So last part is P. So P is purification. Now purification is not just some religious ritual where you know pull some water or pour put some water to purify themselves or chant some mantras. Yeah, those may be a part of it. But the essence of purification is that it is a process by which what we feel matters. It aligns with what really matters. What we feel matters aligns with what really matters. When we all function in our lives, we function with the idea of something matters. So, now if you consider the mismatch between these two, mismatch between what we feel matters and what actually matters, that is a cause of great distress. One of my friends is from Russia and he was telling me that when he was growing up, there, was, there were ads about awareness, about alcohol addiction. The main alcohol that is there in Russia is vodka. So there was this ad where a family is watching TV and the news comes that the price of vodka has risen. And then the kid is a little fearfully, timidly asking his father, who is drinking a bottle of vodka? He says, Dad, will you drink less? And the father says, No, you will eat less. So, such a tragic distortion of values. Now we may, we may feel appalled and disgusted to hear this. But you know, we may do it the same thing. We may value money so much that we may neglect our relationships. Many people, they lose their health to gain wealth. And then after 40, 45, 50, they, they, then this, they lose their wealth to gain back their health. And then in the end, we lose both our health and our wealth. So, often we are driven by an idea of what matters in our life. Somebody may think that the biggest purpose of my life is to get a huge mansion like home. Okay. But in that time, we neglect our relationship, we neglect our health, we neglect our inner growth, our spiritual growth. We may just, we may get that big house, but that big house will only provide us a lot of space in which to be lonely and unhappy. So, what matters and what we feel matters, there is a mismatch between the two of them. And purification is what helps us to bring an alignment. Be it greed or be it anger. There are these inner impurities which are talked about. Greed, anger, lust, jealousy. All of them what they do is they create a mismatch between what matters and what we feel matters. Now somebody who is jealous, they are very good at counting blessings of others. Oh, this person got this and this person got that and this person got that. And oh, I don't have this. And they become unhappy. Actually, our happiness depends on what we have and what we do with what we have. It doesn't depend on what others have. So basically, purification is the process by which what we feel matters becomes increasingly aligned with what matters. And this brings me, I said spirituality has these two parts, philosophy and practice. So philosophy is understood through intelligence, where we see beyond what glitters to what matters. And practice is what the various practices are what enable us to become purified. To align what we think matters 
with what really matters so basically what the spiritual vision describes to us is that each one of us as i said we are parts of god and because we are parts of god what it means is we have parts in god's plan every one of us is a precious part of the divine and every one of us has an invaluable part in the divine plan by which each one of us can do good for ourselves and for the world so the practice in spirituality is a practice which centers on two things there is connection internally the divine and there is contribution externally through the mood of service so when we establish this inner connection and the outer contribution we will find that our satisfaction will increase substantially so i'll some i will talk about one image with which i'll conclude this session that you know we all function in the world and when we function in the world quite often we do certain things and we expect certain things from the world by the world we mean people you no know, we may study a lot and we expect that i should come top in my class we may work in our professional field and we expect that i will that i'll become famous i'll be recognized as the with the best employee or the best executive or the best business person so we expect things to happen in particular ways in the world we may offer love to someone and we expect that person to reciprocate but unfortunately the world doesn't always work like that now we will if our vision is limited only to this much you know i and the world then what we have will never be enough you know what somebody else has will will that's what we will longing for more and more like say suppose of uh, some colleague some friend of ours loses their job then it's easy to feel empathize empathic for them oh you know things will be all right but if they get a job better than our job then hey i want you to be happy but not happier than me there is always this insecurity this sense of the comparing mentality keeps us constantly insecure and unhappy so if we are if our vision is focused only on the world then there is going to be insecurity and eventually a sense of inferiority and this plagues everyone in today's world the gita expands our vision it says that we are here in this world but above us is god and what we have what we have is a gift to us it is a gift given to us by god each one of us may have some talent some interests some abilities and each of these is a gift to us given by god and what we do with what we have is our gift to god what we do with what we have that is our gift to god in this way each one of us is given a gift so that we can give a gift to the world and help contribute in the world so bhakti is about establishing this inner connection this inner connection where we understand that we are all parts of the divine that our connection with god is not dependent on anything external that with how much fame i have how much wealth i have how good are my looks they don't matter 
you know we each one of us has intrinsic self worth because each one of us is a beloved part of the divine and uh, many of you have children one of the greatest gifts that any parent can give to a child is to help them realize that they have intrinsic self worth the world will de 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 define our self worth only in extrinsic terms but that propels us on a path of insecurity and inferiority so each one of us when when we adopt spiritual practices say we were doing some kirtan over here we chanted the hari krishna mantra so this is not just a religious ritual it's a way by which we connect with the divine when we chant this mantra hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare it is basically a reminder to ourselves that we are parts of a higher reality oh part stay in our harmony with the whole oh part return to harmony with the whole and that is why such mantra chanting such prayers they bring if we do it diligently a peace of mind that no amount of wealth can provide because this brings us that inner connection and then once we have established that inner connection then each one of us can make an outer contribution in the bhagavad gita krishna tells arjuna mam anusmara yudhya cha he says you remember me remember that you are a part of me remember that you have a plan in my vision for the world so stay internally connected stay secure and then arjuna your particular role in society is that you are a martial guardian of society so you use your archery skills for fighting so each one of us some of you may be professionals doctors engineers professors homemakers we all have different roles but all these roles can be done in a mood of seva in a mood of service and when we do this we will find that the greater our inner connection and the greater our outer contribution we'll find that a sublime satisfaction will start coming in our life a satisfaction that no amount of material possession or material position can provide and that is the ultimate blessing of spirituality the bhagavad gita concludes with an image of arjuna having raised his bow in readiness to fight so what happens is at the start of the gita arjuna is dejected he is confused he is dejected he's put aside his bow i can't fight but that same arjuna at the end of the gita is confident is energized he has picked up his bow so arjuna's bow represents our determination life's struggles and challenges can dishearten even the best of us we start thinking is it really worth it am i working so hard people are not appreciating what i'm doing you know the world is not recognizing me is it really worth it but when we get this spiritual vision of life we understand that everything that we do matters that life when we live it in a mood of connection and contribution is something that really matters every one of our existence every one of us our endeavors matter and it is that vision that fills our life with meaning and purpose and grants us the ultimate fulfillment so i'll summarize what i discussed today we discussed about the relationship between a broadly science and spirituality or a broadly a scientific approach to spirituality so i talked about a sip of wisdom the first point was spirituality so many of you mentioned various aspects of spirituality and i discussed of spirituality is the study of what matters that there is a study of matter in which science has excelled 
but there is the study of what matters what is really important in life and as a part of this study there are two aspects philosophy offers us a postulation of reality what what are the various components of reality and what matters within and practice is what enables us within practice there is religion but practice is what enables us to align ourselves to ver verify the philosophy aspect so philosophy in science is like theory and experiment that is similar to the practice and then in the second point i talked about sip intelligence so this intelligence is associated with the philosophy aspect so intelligence means we see beyond what glitters to what matters that that there is more to reality than what we perceive science has also told us that beyond visible phenomena there are invisible principles and it is to the extent we understand those invisible principles to that extent we can tap great power is observing apples fall does not give us any power but understanding the invisible principle of gravity gives us great power so similarly what the gita tells us is that there is duality in this world and just being buffeted tossed up and down by duality will keep us unsteady but if we can connect with an anchor then which is far bigger than that duality then that anchor will bring us steadiness so how do we connect with that anchor the gita explains that there is a larger reality and we are parts each one of us is parts of a larger reality so that there is a larger organizing reality i talked about the point of the game of dice that there are more than 100 things which are exactly right for our existence so the larger reality that we are part of is not just a arbitrary existence there is an organizing intelligence behind it and the last part i talked about was p was purification so this was associated with the practice by which what happens is that what we feel matters becomes more and more aligned with what actually matters what really matters most of the distress in life like addiction is an example where the addict thinks that what matters is alcohol even at the cost of relationships health finances life anger means control right now matters more than a steady relationship but what we feel matters and what really matters the to extend the two get aligned we'll find that we will become steadier and happier in our lives so as long as our vision is just i am here and the world is here and i will work and i'll get recognition from the world and this will always keep us with a feeling of insecurity but if you understand that we are parts of a higher reality we have been given gifts and we are meant to give gifts then this inner connection and the outer contribution these are the dual aspects of spirituality through personal spiritual practices like mantra chanting we establish our inner connection and through adopting a mood of service in everything that we do in our life we make outer contribution and in this way we will find that our life will become filled with a sublime meaning with a divine purpose and with the ultimate fulfillment thank you very much hey krishna